Okay, I'm going to do a short video on how body fat can cause chronic inflammation, chronic diseases, and chronic pain. When I first started looking at diet and inflammation, there was not a lot of information on it. My first effort looking at this in terms of making the, the correlation because, again, research really hadn't begun when I first started seeing this take place in patients. I wrote this book, Nutrition and Pain Control, in 1995. In 1998, I expanded this book into clinical nutrition for pain, inflammation, and tissue healing, which was more like a textbook. And I focused on various pathways. In most cases, what was pretty clear back then, although not well identified in the research, was that eating a pro-inflammatory diet would augment inflammatory pathways. And those would be the pathways that are listed on the front cover there, even though it's kind of hard to see. And this led, this was back in 1998, this book was written, and then in 2002 I published this paper, probably the first paper published in the scientific literature on this topic, the idea that diet could induce a pro-inflammatory state. Actually, if you go into PubMed and look, you really won't find anything that was uh, this sort of broadly described uh, before 2002. And at that point in time, the main conclusion, not surprisingly, was that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables tends to be anti-inflammatory, while a diet deficient in these foods is pro-inflammatory. Meat eating was never really viewed, at least in my view, as an issue. It was always a lack of vegetation. Eating grains as a, as a driver of, 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 of anti-inflammatory activity was never really an issue because it was always the lack of vegetables and fruit. Those would be the biggies. It's always about vegetation. So then in 2011, so now we're talking six years ago, uh, a ton of work has been done in this area, particularly in the last 10, 10 to 15 years. Um, a whole lot more after uh, my my paper was written. Not that my paper drove it, but I just happened to identify this stuff really early on. But nothing uh, gave any indication back then that somehow body fat would be a driver of inflammation, or if there was evidence, it was not easy to find. But this is 2011, and what we see here in the left side, what we see in the left side is adipose tissue mass, or adipose tissue. And adipose tissue consists of immune cells and fat cells. Now, when I first learned about adipose tissue, it was just fat cells. And adipose tissue was simply viewed as a storage of excess calories, no matter what the calorie source was. So what we see here are these blue anti-inflammatory macrophages, M2 anti-inflammatory macrophages. We know they're anti-inflammatory because they are dumping these anti-inflammatory chemicals. We love interleukin-10. Interleukin-10 actually is the the big daddy anti-inflammatory cytokine. Now, adiponectin is released by adipocytes, and, adipos, and adiponectin actually goes and talks to skeletal muscle and helps to promote mitochondrial biogenesis and helps muscles respond better to insulin. So here you can see crosstalk between healthy adipose tissue and your musculoskeletal system. Well, as we flame up, as we, as our fat cells swell in size, and they always blame the high-fat diet, they can never just say high-calorie diet, and we know it's not a high-fat diet compared to other calories because we know the average American just about 60% of their calories come from 20% sugar, 20% flour, and 20% refined oils. And so 40% about of the average American's diet is sugar and flour. So it's really a high carbohydrate diet if you want to get picky. So what happens? Whenever we overeat calories, and it's usually sugar, flour that are bathed in oils, the adipocytes swell in size. Look how big they get. Mildly obese. As we become mildly obese, the anti-inflammatory guys start to get produced less. And why is that? Well, we start to lose uh, a, the population of anti-inflammatories, but we also start to gain pro-inflammatory immune cells. And as the calorie accumulation continues, you can see that we lose 
our anti-inflammatory immune cells, and we get an overpopulation that didn't exist at all in the lean state. And now we have no production of anti-inflammatory interleukin-10, skeletal muscle, healing, adiponectin. Now we're just left with these pro-inflammatory macrophages, the M1s, they're activated as if they're dealing with a low-grade infection. And literally, we have become infected with stored fat from overeating sugar, flour, and refined oils. And now these pro-inflammatory immune cells start to dump these, this inflammatory chemistry. And if you just focus for a second on TNF, TNF is the chemical or one of the chemicals that has been identified as a driver of autoimmune disease. So drugs like... Enbril, Remicade, and Humira are given specifically to block TNF's activity. Well, where does it come from? It wasn't being produced in excess when we were lean. It's produced in excess when the adipocytes, the fat cells, swell, and then the immune cell population changes so that we now have a pro-inflammatory adipose tissue mass. Other immune cells also get involved. For example, your T cells, so this is called T helper 2, blue, anti-inflammatory. T regulatory, blue, anti-inflammatory with the lean fat cells. Pumping out the interleukin 10 that we love. Anti-inflammatory, healing, analgesic, pain reducing. But as we flame up with sugar, flour, refined oils, look what happens. We get a new population of immune cells. Whoops. Bleu, the reds, a new population of immune cells start to enter, and we become officially free by the time we are severely obese. And this can take place even if one is mildly obese. It all depends upon how unlucky you are genetically, I, I, it, it appears. So if we look over here, we see all the red pro-inflammatory immune cells, none of the blue anti-inflammatory. So our helper 2 cells have been replaced with helper T helper 1 cells. These guys are typically associated with autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. And our T regulatory cells are replaced by cytotoxic T cells. These guys are most famous for dealing with uh, viral infections. So once someone flames up, we now have lost all of our anti-inflammatory or most of our anti-inflammatory immune cells and we are replaced with pro-inflammatory macrophages, as seen in the previous slide. And here we have pro-inflammatory helper 1 cells, typically associated with autoimmune disease, cytotoxic T cells, typically associated with viral infections. So now once we enter this stage, we literally walk around eating, sleeping, resting, attempting to work out with the chemistry that is low-grade, but similar to autoimmune disease or a viral infection. So no wonder why people feel like crap when they start to gain body fat and the fat cells swell and we get invasion of our adipose tissue with these pro-inflammatory immune cells. The official term that is used or has been promoted, which I like, for this state is called adiposeopathy. And the adiposeopathy state uh, we'll be describing in a couple of seconds. This is a free paper if you'd like to get it. You can see sick fat syndrome is kind of the term that they use. So here we have a picture from this paper. Zooming in close. There we go. Big daddy on the couch. This big old man, the big belly. This did not come from eating too much meat. Remember, the average American's primary calories are sugar, flour, and refined oils. That is the problem. It is not because of meat and cheese. If you drop the sugar, flour, and refined oils, Big Daddy would start to shred. But once Big Daddy appears, we get multiple pro-inflammatory changes. Here they are. Look a little bit closer. I'm not going to go over really any of these except to state that what we have here is pathogenic or pathologic endocrine and immune responses, which I already talked about. This is a pro-inflammatory state. And over time, it will drive disease in most organs. You can see along the bottom a host of organs from viscera, skeletal, immune, skin, heart, 
brain, intestines, thyroid, kidney, across the board, and blood vessels, of course, narrow. And now we end up with a, a heart attack, worst case in terms of this approach. But cancer, as well as promoted depression, a whole host of conditions, including chronic pain, which was my focus in this paper, which is why I looked at body mass index and its relationship to musculoskeletal pain. In this paper, I talk about adiposeopathy, and I give a list of markers that one can measure to see how flamed up they are, and I expanded that list in this book, The Deflame Diet. And so obviously what happens is as we live on these pro-inflammatory calories down below in excess, which most of us do, we gain body fat. Our body fat transforms from one that is anti-inflammatory to one that is pro-inflammatory, which then leads to the promotion of all of these various conditions depending upon one's genetic predisposition. So we got to wash these calories away and get all of our body mass index and other markers normal. So we want, we want to wash away these pro-inflammatory calories with anti-inflammatory calories. So my suggestion would be obviously, shockingly, that people should read the Deflame Diet book and learn more about this. And then watch the videos that I put up. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date and to be continually reminded to avoid dietary crack because we crackheads forget and we tend to start eating this stuff again. So we must avoid this and stay on the deflame pathway.